Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we have a super controversial video. We're going to react to Bible prophecy proves Jesus not crucified by yet again many prophets one message. This video is a must watch for Muslims, but Christians alike, of course. Guys, please stay respectful in the comment section. Discuss it like humans. Please behave your Yourselves. All right, with no further ado, let's have a look. One of the most contested issues between Christianity and Islam is the crucifixion. Sure. The death of Jesus on the cross is taken by Christians as an almost indisputable fact of history. Pretty yeah. much, I have to say, the way that I've been brought up, the crucifixion is not something that we dispute historically. Historically, it seems that we have plenty of evidence for the crucifixion. The Quran makes the bold claim that Jesus was not crucified. Yeah. In this video, we are going to see that the Quran has a remarkable insight into biblical prophecy, which proves that the Messiah was saved by God. Let's see. The New Testament reports the following encounter between Jesus and Satan. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. That's right. Here, Satan tested Jesus with a diabolical challenge. Biblical prophecy foretold that angels will protect you, so prove it right by throwing yourself from a great height. Wow, man. Now, notice the response of Jesus. He does not accuse Satan of twisting scripture. Rather, he says, it is also written, which mm. is an affirmation that the prophecy is indeed about him. Christian Bible commentaries confirm that the quoted prophecy is messianic. For example, the Jamieson, Fawcett and Brown commentary states, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, as if he should say, True, it is so written, and on that promise I implicitly rely. The pulpit commentary states, the devil, appealing to Jesus' consciousness of abiding communion with God, bids him enjoy to the full promise of God's protection. This for me already is enough explanation that Jesus is not God because Jesus is seeking communion with God away from Satan. John Calvin's commentary states, Satan is not wrong in proving from this passage that angels have been given to Christ to wait on him, to guard him and to bear him on their hands. Let's now take a closer look at the prophecy applied to Jesus. It's quoted from the Old Testament book of Psalms. No harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. Right. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honour him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. We can see that this prophecy in Psalm 91 mentions that Jesus will not be harmed, <laughs> that the angels will guard him, and that God will rescue and deliver him. Now, this is where the prophecy gets even more interesting. We actually find the Hebrew name of Jesus, Yeshua, is the very last word in the prophecy. The Hebrew word Yeshua means salvation. So not only does this prophecy explicitly foretell a saved Messiah, it even foreshadowed his very name, Yeshua. It is clear that any claims of a crucified Jesus completely contradict this prophecy. 
Fair enough. It's a strong Saint point, man. Saint Augustine, an early church. It's actually quite amazing because it shows that Jesus has been prophesied, the Messiah has been prophesied, but at the same time it has been prophesied that he won't get harmed. One of the greatest church theologians in history True. discussed mm. Psalm 91 in depth. Augustine fully acknowledged that the mention of the angels lifting up was in reference to Jesus. But when it came... Could it be interpreted as well that he will be lifted up three days later, that he will resurrect? Let me know in the comment section, Christians, please. Came ...to those portions of the prophecy that are problematic from a Christian perspective, such as the mention of being rescued and protected, Augustine arbitrarily switched his interpretation to the church, i.e. the entire body of Christians. This is despite the fact that the entire prophecy is addressing a single person, which is demonstrated by its consistent use of pronouns in the singular, such as you, he, and him. This goes to show that even church fathers struggled when it came to reconciling Psalm 91 with the New Testament claims of a crucified Jesus. This is why they had to resort to twisting the prophecy. This is what the Qur'an says about the crucifixion. And this was absolutely mind-blowing to me whilst reading the Quran, the passage that states those that disagreed about him are full of doubt. And it continues with, with no knowledge to follow, only assumption. And this is truly the situation that we are finding ourselves in when we are speaking about those historical claims. We are full of doubt and we are only assuming certain things. We cannot certainly know. The Quran is crystal clear. Jesus was saved from the crucifixion, being raised up to God, alive and unharmed. These verses show remarkable insight when we analyze them in detail. The Quran's claim that Jesus was saved by being raised up perfectly mirrors the prophecy in Psalm 91, which foretold that Jesus would be saved by being lifted up by angels. We can see that really what powerful, the Quran man. reports I about Jesus is in fact the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy that the Messiah would not be harmed. Hmm. This is extremely compelling, I have to say. The foundation of Christianity is the crucifixion. For yes. the Quran to come along nearly 600 years later and challenge it is quite bold. Let's sure, and this is why so many Christians discard it. They say, yeah, sure, God comes 600 years later to set this straight. That doesn't make sense. If it was wrong from the get-go, why didn't God correct it just right then and there? Why wait 600 years? Consider this from a psychological perspective. If Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was a false prophet, then he would have just gone along with New Testament claims that Jesus was crucified. This would Not have made it easier for Christians to convert to Islam, so there would have been a lot to gain. Sure. But Islam is not about what is convenient, it's about the truth. The implications of the Qur'an's position are far-reaching and actually go beyond Islam. One of the reasons that Jewish people reject Jesus is because of the crucifixion. They know that the Messiah cannot be crucified, based on Old Testament prophecies that we have seen. The Messiah is supposed to be someone who will be victorious. So any claim that he was whipped, tortured and died in humiliation is a contradiction. So the New Testament claims that Jesus died ironically justifies the Jewish rejection of him. The Quran removes the stumbling block of a crucified Messiah and paves the way for the Jewish people to accept Jesus. Many have criticized the Quran and its audacity in challenging the New Testament crucifixion narrative. No, we have seen that it is in fact the New Testament accounts written by anonymous authors decades after Jesus, which claim that Jesus was crucified, a complete contradiction of Old Testament prophecy that the Messiah would be saved from death. 
These prophecies are a vindication. It would be really interesting to hear the Jewish perspective on this. The only thing that I know is Josephus, which apparently was a Jew, and he speaks about the crucifixion. I don't know how legit it truly is. I would have to do much more research. But from that Jewish source, we do hear that Jesus was crucified. I would really love to hear the Jewish perspective. If we have any Jews watching, please let me know in the comment section. Thanks. Of the Quran's position and proof of its tremendous insight into the actual life and mission of the Messiah. To learn the truth about Jesus, please download your free copy of the book did. Jesus, Man, Messenger, Messiah from the link below. All right, guys, this is it for today's video. Absolutely mind blowing stuff. I have to say, this video did not disappoint. I never thought about it this way. This is why I love reacting to those videos because I always learn myself. Yes, it is a bit egoistical, but as I said multiple times, I do watch those videos because I want to learn and I would watch them in my spare time as well. So this way we can watch them together. Let me know, as always, if you want me to continue with this type of work. And please, guys, Jews, Christians, Muslims, let me know in the comment section what you think about this subject. I generally want to hear especially the Jewish perspective on this one. For me, this was absolutely news. And I have to say that it is very compelling news. If the Messiah was supposed to be saved, he of course couldn't have been crucified. This is a very, very strong point. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support me on Patreon and fight against demonetization and shadow banning, then please check out the links in the description box below. Thank you so much. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.